All right, you guys, I know you're wondering why is there no intro to this video, but this video is gonna be a full length. It's already long enough, so I decided to kick the intro. But to start this haircut, I'm basically gonna separate the top from the bottom. I'm gonna part my clients hair at the parietal ridge. That is the corner where the sides meet the top. And uh, I'm just gonna part it, make sure I do it real neat. Because if not, your haircut is gonna turn out sloppy. Always make sure you do the proper procedures comb the hair down uh you know part the hair real neat always do everything neat because you don't want to work on a sloppy canvas just think if i was to just start without parting the hair the part would have looked all sloppy uh the head would have been you know not proportion i mean the fade around it would just you know whatever you're doing to the hair underneath is gonna look bad so make sure you uh you know part and do a neat job as much as you can So one of the things that I like to do uh, is visualize the cut um, before I actually start cutting. I'm taking this time and I'm prepping, um, trying to get this line as straight as possible. But in but meanwhile, you know, I'm visualizing what I want to do. I'm looking at it and I'm like the water boy with it. All right, I'm visualizing and I'm, I'm gonna attack it. So as I'm putting the last duck clip in. I'm basically gonna take my pick. I'm gonna use my comb and start laying that hair down. Now, um, this isn't really like a must because you're gonna take off this bulk anyway, but I want that top layer that I'm combing to be as laid down as possible. So right now, I'm just debulking the hair on the sides. All right, I got my three guard on open and I'm going up and right at the top where I set that, um, that I did the part, I'm basically scooping out. I don't wanna go all the way up to the top. Um, this is not an undercut. This is an undercut, but it's not a hardcore undercut where you know, you're going all the way up to that part and you're trying to separate the top from the bottom. That's not what I'm doing. I'm leaving hair at the top a little bit so I have hair to sit on. So when I take my duck clips out, the hair that's on top, I need that bulk on the sides uh, so the hair can lay down and rest on it. So the reason why I'm using a three guard um, is that I just want to take baby steps. I don't want to go in with a lower guard. I didn't know how long his hair would be at this three. So I just wanted to take my time. It's better to start off high and work your way down when it comes to, you know, using your guards because you could take, you could take hair off, but you can't put hair back on. So for anybody out there that doesn't know this, after you cut the hair off, you always, always, it don't matter what client it is, unless you got straight, straight, bone straight hair, uh, it's always important to lay that hair back down. No matter what, after you cut it against the grain, lay it back down, that's very important. Now, 
Now that I visually can see how low his hair is with that three, I decided to put my two guard on with the lever open and I'm going up um, just the same amount as I went up with the three guard. But remember to scoop out because you still want that bulk on top. Also remember that hair grows in different ways. So um, going up and down uh, may not always be against the grain for some clients. You know what I mean? Some, some clients hair grows on the neck. It grows sideways. So you're going to have to cut against the grain uh, sideways. So just keep that in mind when you're cutting hair it's not always an up and down motion going against the grain make sure you pay attention to the hair growth pattern so my client wanted a taper on the sides so i suggested a burst taper he was cool with it so i'm gonna set in my bald line in a triangle like shape uh, the reason why I like to do burst tapers is because it doesn't look like your average taper. I want my haircuts to stand out from the rest. And by doing that, you know, I want when my client leaves the shop, I'm like, man, how did they do that? You know what I mean? What type of taper is that? So you want to be unique on how you do your cuts. Now going back with my clippers, with the lever open, I'm setting in my next guideline, going up about a half inch. Notice how I'm using my corners at all times. I'm not using the full blade. Notice the way that I'm cutting in that direction. Uh, I'm going the opposite of my client's hair growth pattern. So in the same way you set your lever open is the same way you set your one guard open. I'm going up about a half inch in that same direction, making sure that I keep that same consistency. So even though we use the two guard open already, uh, I'm still cleaning up some of that bulk at the top. So that way uh, my taper could have a nice transition at the top. So I see some areas where the two couldn't get it out. So instead of just closing the two, I decided to just slap on the one guard open and just flick that area out. So using the zero guard close in a flick out motion, flick out that middle line. Remember to start below the line and flick to the line, keeping that same uh, going against the grain motion in that same way. Everything should be going in that same direction, opposite of the hair growth pattern. Now with the lever closed in a flick out motion, flick out that bottom line. What I like to do is start at that point at the top, then work my way down to the corner like I'm doing, and then just kind of tilt the blade up. Um, in a flick out motion, still starting below the line, flicking to the line, but I just like to start in that middle. That, that gives me a little bit more control. At the 
the end of it, you could be done right now. I could be done. I could just start on the back or start on the other side. I, I could just move on. But this is what separates you from every other barber is detail work. Here is where you take a look away from the blend a little bit. Get your eyes readjusted. Whatever you have to do, look in the mirror and notice those little small details in your blend and just knock them uh, bulk areas out with your corners. So with a hairstyle like this, I like my tapers in the back to really stand out. So I usually uh, go a little higher um, on the bald line than any other haircut. So I'm gonna set my guidelines a lot wider than on the sides. So with my lever open, I want to say I'm going up about a full inch uh, on this guideline, uh, a lot higher than on the sides. Setting in my one guard open about an inch, uh, keeping that same consistency, making sure I brush down as I go. Putting on a two guard just to make sure I cleaned up everything. I actually closed the lever too just so I could, you know, make sure everything is clean and the transition is nice at the top. With the zero guard closed in a flick out motion, flick out that bottom line. Remember to start below the line and flick to the line. Same thing with the lever closed in a flick out motion. Flick out the bottom line. Remember to start below the line and flick to the line. Just remember also, if you need to go uh, a little higher in the blend, adjust your lever as you go up.
So what I like to do to the front area is knock that down to a one guard. So sometimes I'll close the lever depending on the hair texture. Right now, I got the lever open and I'm just knocking that front line down. That way I get a more crisp line. Uh, normally I start lining up um, my client's hair vertically on the sides uh, but for the video I always have to start in the middle just so you guys can see you know what I do so I start in the middle and I work my way to the sides and I line up the vertical bar then I try to line up the C cup area to get that as symmetrical as possible this is where you take your time Make sure that you know how much hair you're cutting off. You don't wanna push your lineup back. Um, it's all about, you can even sometimes lift up the hair just so you know where his natural line is. Sometimes you do have to push that envelope uh, a little bit more uh, just to get it that crisp, but you gotta learn how much to do and not do, right? That just comes with practice. I mean, uh, I wasn't always good. I, I had trial and errors that I had to, uh, where I had to learn and make my mistakes as well. So um, this is just repetition at the end of the day. Don't be afraid to fail and don't be afraid to take risk, all right? With every uh, obstacle, that you go through is a chance for you to learn from something. So don't be afraid to, to if you gotta push the envelope, push the envelope, you know what I mean? Uh, while, especially while you're in school. Don't let nobody say, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. While you're in school is the perfect time, while you're practicing is the perfect time to get your reps in.
So right now I'm gonna take the duck clips out. My client didn't want anything off the top. So basically I'm just gonna grab my shears and just make sure everything is proportioned on the side by clipping a little bit off, making sure that the hair looks even as possible. Listen, let me tell you why they call me 360. When they sit down in my chair, I spin them in a full 360 and they come out looking like this. YouTube, this is the cut. And if you like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Also, Hustle Dreams Production, that's my brother. He does all my beats. His YouTube channel will be linked in the description below. Make sure y'all support him, give him a follow. Also, if you wanna know where you can find any tools that you've seen in this video, links in the description below also make sure you guys follow me on instagram and snapchat at 360 jeezy i'm out of here